Hello there, all my crafty friends. Here's a quick, easy, and really pretty project you can whip up in a couple of days. I'm going to show you how to make and weatherproof the prettiest flower pot that can be used indoors or outdoors. Barbette from California, you asked for a clay pot, and Cindy K, you asked for a decoupage and some 3D molds. Here you go, ladies. I hope you're both watching. So if you're ready, let's make a mess. The first thing I need to do is weatherproof this little clay pot. I'm going to give the entire pot and saucer, inside and out, two coats of Polyvine Heavy Duty Extreme Varnish. I'll let it dry for two hours between coats and another two hours after the second coat. This is a great product and is meant for indoor or outdoor use. It makes your piece weatherproof by adding waterproofing and UV protection. It's also chemical resistant and cures in just 16 hours. Your piece will be waterproof, however, please don't submerge it in water and leave it. I'm coating the inside of the pot so that when watering a plant, the water won't be able to soak through to the back side of my decoupage napkin. So don't leave this step out. I did a water test and the results are amazing. I painted a coat of the Polyvine Extreme on the little saucer and let it cure for about a week. I put water in the saucer and let it set for 24 hours. I'm pouring it out and you are going to see right along with me what happened. The water just wiped right off and did not saturate the clay. Normally if you put water on a clay pot it soaks it right up but not once it's been coated with the Polyvine Extreme. They do suggest not to leave your piece in standing water or submerge it, but you can see it works great for everyday normal waterproofing. I'm going to brush on Polyvine's Multi-Surface Lacquer. This is a great primer for any shiny surface, such as glass or ceramic. I'm using the dead flat finish because I want to remove the shine. This will give paint or decoupage glue a great surface to adhere to. Paint won't chip, scratch, or peel. The Extreme took care of the weatherproofing. Now I need to get it ready for paint and decoupage. I'm putting it on the outside of the pot, the inside rim, and both sides of the saucer. This and all the products you're going to see me use today came from decoupagenapkins.com, my wonderful sponsors. I'm using Das Clay to make a leaf clay trim for the pot and saucer. I put a little cornstarch in the mold before adding the clay, which aids in the release when unmolding. If you don't wish to see the captions, you have the ability to turn them off. Tap your screen, go into the settings icon in the top right corner, click on captions, then turn off captions. I'm using tight bond wood glue to adhere the clay to the saucer and pot while the clay is still wet. That way it will dry and form to my pieces. I chose this glue because it's meant for exterior use and is also waterproof. DecoupageNapkins.com has such a great selection of rice papers as well as napkins that you can purchase one at a time. Rub on transfers, molds, modeling clay, stencils, stamps, scrapbook paper, and much more over 8,000 products, including a great variety of Polyvine products, which are a hot ticket item right now. Three great lines of paint, Dixie Belle Chalk Mineral Paint, Clay Mud Paint, and Pentart Paints in a wide variety of colors. They are wonderful to work with and will send your order out fast. They offer several automatic discounts when checking out, on orders over $50, $75, and $125. Subscribe to their newsletter by entering your email address and you'll receive 10% off your next order. They are truly your one-stop shop for craft supplies. Make sure you check them out. I'll leave you some links in my description box below. I decided to mingle a few clay roses in with the leaf trim. I glued the roses on the leaf trim very randomly in groups of two and three and sometimes only one. I don't want it to look too structured. I test all the products that I recommend in my videos. 
I won't recommend anything that I haven't used myself and prefer. If I'm recommending it, you can bet it's a great product. Each product will be listed in my description box below and will have a blue link to make it easy for you to find. Any of the links I provide are safe for you to click on. I'm going to paint the pot and saucer using Dixie Bell's chalk paint in the color cotton, which is white. Dixie Bell's chalk paint is one of the nicest chalk paints I've used. It goes on very thick and creamy and has great coverage. The background of the napkin I'm going to use is also white. When decoupaging, you always want to use a very light base color, such as white or a very pale cream, depending on the background color of your napkin. Any dark colors will show through your napkin and give it a very dark, muddy look. I didn't let the clay dry before painting. As clay dries, it shrinks a little bit and will develop some small cracks. So it's perfectly fine to paint over your damp clay. It will actually help the clay not to crack while drying. If you're enjoying this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. And why not share this with a friend? Thanks for doing that. I let the first coat dry for about 30 minutes. Chalk paint can have a little bit of a rough surface, so I sanded it with a fine grit sandpaper and then gave it another coat of paint. And let that dry for another 30 minutes. You can see that I'm giving the paint a very light mist of water. This helps eliminate brush strokes and leaves a really nice soft finish. But be careful use a very very light mist if you use too much the paint will run if you do this watch for runs and smooth them out right away if you'd rather you can just give it a light sanding again after the second coat of paint dries either one will give you a nice surface to decoupage on while the pot and saucer are drying i'm going to get my napkin prepped and ready to go i love this napkin but unfortunately the pot is small so I won't be able to use the Eiffel Tower. I'm going to separate the bottom floral trim and white fence from the rest of the napkin. I'm using a water brush to do this. A water brush has a cartridge that you fill with water and then brush it on the napkin or rice paper. The water dispenses easily, so this is really convenient. You can find this in my description box below in my favorite tools section, just in case you want to check it out. When decoupaging, you always want to tear your napkin or rice paper. A torn edge will blend so much better than a sharp cut edge. This napkin is three plies, so I'm removing the bottom two, as I'll only be working with the top ply that has the print on it. I'm removing as much of the background as possible. This will make your finished project look much better. I'm snipping all the lines that are the fence. Because of the shape of the pot, they will end up overlapping each other. If you don't snip them, you will end up with a lot of wrinkles. It'll look much better for them to overlap. Now I'm separating the top between the roses a little bit so they can spread out since the top of the pot is wider than the bottom. Where are you watching from? Let me know in the comments. It's fun to see what cities and countries you are all watching from. I'm filming from Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States. I'm using the dry method of decoupaging, which is to put your napkin on the piece dry and add your adhesive over the top of the napkin. Brushing from the center outward to the sides, top and bottom and I'm using the multi-surface lacquer as my decoupage adhesive. Using this method, along with any of the polyvine formulas, reduces wrinkles and tearing considerably. Although there will be a few wrinkles simply because of the way this pot is shaped, but there will only be a few.
send me a comment and let me know what type of project you would like to see next. Decoupage, mixed media canvases, or more mason jar decorating. Your suggestion could be my very next video. I answer every single comment I receive. I love hearing from all of you and look forward to reading all your comments. I cut up a Ziploc bag and I'm missing it with a little bit of water. I'll lay that on the pot and smooth out any wrinkles that I see. Don't try this without misting your piece of plastic with some water. Without the water, the plastic will stick to the napkin and pull it right off the pot. I have one area that is a pretty large gap from when I separated the roses, so I'm going to add a butterfly over the gap. I'll let that dry for a few hours before moving on. I added a few butterflies, birds, and that cute little bicycle to the saucer. Once dry, I gave the pot and saucer a coat of the Polyvine Extreme to protect all that beautiful decoupaging. I let that dry for two hours. There is some gray printing around the napkin edges, so I mixed up some gray paint with water to make it runny. I am dabbing it around all the images to blend it in. The water makes the paint easier to blend with the existing napkin. It makes the color a little more subtle. I did this on the saucer and on the top edge of the flowers. If I got paint on any of the flowers, I just wiped it off with a Q-tip. Putting a layer of varnish over the decoupage napkin makes it possible for you to be able to do that. After I did the gray, I dabbed a little white from the top down to blend it together. Okay, here comes the fun part. I'm going to add some antiquing to the trim using this burgundy paint that is the same color as the dark roses in the napkin. I'm adding water to make the paint really runny. I want it to get into all the little nooks and crannies easily. You can make antiquing medium out of any color paint by adding water. I'll brush it on, making sure it runs into all the cracks. Then I'll wipe it off right away with a soft cloth. I cut up old t-shirts into little squares and that works great. Make sure you wipe it off before it dries. I do it in sections to make sure that doesn't happen. You have to add some gloss varnish on your piece to be able to do this. If there isn't a gloss, the paint will grab and you won't be able to wipe it off. Remember I said, let's make a mess while the time has come. Make sure you don't have anything nearby because this is going to fly everywhere. I made the paint even runnier by adding more water. I'm using a fan brush and tapping it over the pot and saucer. This is leaving burgundy speckles all over. I just love this look. It gives a very vintage look to your pieces. When I was done with this, I had speckles all over my hands and arms. It's messy, but looks so cool. I'll let this dry for about an hour. Don't forget. All of the wonderful products I'm using today can be found at my favorite place for craft supplies, decoupagenapkins.com, and I'll leave you links in my description box below. 
I gave the pot and saucer two more coats of the extreme varnish to protect all the beautiful work I had just finished. I waited two hours between coats. Cure time is 16 hours, but I waited 48 hours before adding my plant. This beautiful pot is now weatherproof. You can put it in your garden outside or you can keep it in the house. Either way, water won't damage it under normal circumstances. Remember, don't submerge it in water and leave it. I put together a playlist of some other tutorials you may enjoy. Click the picture on the right to be taken directly to that playlist. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe by clicking my picture in the top right corner so you don't miss any future videos.